Ever wondered why you behave a certain way in relationships? Each person brings a unique dynamic, but there are certain patterns that many of us follow. The intrigue of relationship dynamics lies in these patterns, deeply ingrained and often subconscious. They are the invisible threads that weave our interactions, shaping the tapestry of our relationships. One such pattern is our attachment style, how we emotionally bond and respond to others in relationships. There's secure, anxious, avoidant, and fearful avoidant. Each style carries its own unique strengths and challenges, and understanding yours can be the key to healthier, more fulfilling connections. Another crucial element is our love language, the way we express and receive love. Whether it's through words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, or physical touch, knowing your love language can strengthen the bonds you share with others. So, let's dive into the heart of the matter, the four attachment styles. Attachment styles are patterns of how we think, feel, and behave in relationships. They form early in our lives and shape our interactions as adults. Now let's delve into the four primary attachment styles. First up, we have the secure attachment style. Individuals with this style feel comfortable with intimacy and are usually warm and loving. They don't have an issue trusting their partners and can communicate their needs effectively. Picture a couple who are open with each other, can express their feelings without fear, and feel confident in their relationship. That's secure attachment. Next is the anxious attachment style. Here, individuals often worry about their partner's love and commitment. They may have a fear of being abandoned and might seek constant reassurance. Imagine a person who frequently asks their partner if they're loved or if everything is okay. That's an anxious attachment style. Third on our list is the avoidant attachment style. People with this style may seem independent and self-reliant, often appearing to avoid closeness or emotional connections. They value their freedom and might struggle with intimacy. Consider a person who keeps their partner at arm's length always maintains an escape route and avoids deep emotional conversations. That's an avoidant attachment style. Lastly, we have the fearful avoidant attachment style. This is a combination of the anxious and avoidant styles. Individuals with this style can feel torn between wanting closeness and fearing it. They may desire a strong relationship, but their fear of being hurt might cause them to pull away. Picture someone who craves a deep connection, yet pushes away when things get too close for comfort. That's a fearful, avoidant attachment style. In essence, these attachment styles provide a framework to understand our behavior in relationships. They help us recognize our strengths, our triggers, and areas where we might need to grow. Recognizing your attachment style is the first step to understanding your relationship dynamics. Now that we've unraveled attachment styles, we shift our focus to another crucial aspect of relationships, love languages. Love languages, a term coined by Dr. Gary Chapman, are essentially the ways we give and receive love. They're like a personal guide to understanding how we connect emotionally with others. There are five main types, and each one is unique in its expression of love. First off, we have words of affirmation. This love language involves expressing affection through spoken affection, praise, or appreciation. For these folks, a simple I love you or you mean the world to me can go a long way. Next, there's quality time. For people with this love language, nothing says I love you more than giving undivided attention. It's not about what you do together, but the fact that you're doing it together, fully present and engaged. The third love language is receiving gifts. Now, don't mistake this for materialism. It's not about the price tag. People with this love language value the thought, effort, and love behind the gift. A well-thought-out surprise can mean the world to them. Fourth, we have acts of service. Actions truly speak louder than words for these people. They appreciate when others do things like cooking a meal, doing the laundry, or picking up a prescription, anything that can ease their load. And lastly, physical touch. This isn't just about intimacy. People with this love language feel loved when they receive physical signs of affection, like a hug, a kiss, or a comforting hand on the shoulder. Now the beauty of love languages lies in their diversity. We all express and interpret love differently, and that's okay. It's about understanding these differences and using them to build stronger, healthier, and more fulfilling relationships.
Remember, it's not just about knowing your own love language, but also understanding your partner's. This understanding helps bridge the gap between different expressions of love, fostering deeper connections and mutual respect. Understanding your love language and that of your partner can significantly strengthen your bond. So how do attachment styles and love languages interact in relationships? Now that's a question that gets to the heart of the matter. Imagine attachment styles as the foundation of a house. They dictate how we're wired to connect and interact with others. Love languages, on the other hand, can be seen as the decor within the house. They're the unique ways we express and perceive affection. Let's delve deeper. Consider someone with an anxious attachment style. They often crave closeness and need constant reassurance. Their love language, therefore, might lean toward words of affirmation. They find comfort in hearing expressions of love, understanding, and support. On the flip side, an individual with an avoidant attachment style values independence. They might be more inclined toward acts of service as their love language. They appreciate actions that ease their responsibilities, viewing them as a tangible demonstration of love. And what about those with a secure attachment style? These individuals are generally comfortable with intimacy and independence. They might resonate with any of the five love languages, words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, or physical touch, depending on their personal preferences and experiences. Then there are those with a fearful avoidant attachment style. They typically have mixed feelings about close relationships, both desiring and feeling uncomfortable with emotional closeness. Their love language could vary widely as they strive to reconcile these conflicting feelings. Remember, there's no right or wrong attachment style or love language. It's about understanding yourself and your partner and finding ways to bridge the gap. It's about learning to communicate love in a way that makes sense to each person involved. And while it's true that our attachment styles and love languages can influence our relationships, it's crucial to remember they're not definitive. They are tools for understanding, not rigid boxes we're confined to. By understanding both your attachment style and love language, you can navigate your relationships more effectively. After all, love is a dance, and knowing the steps can make all the difference. Armed with knowledge about attachment styles and love languages, how can we better navigate our relationships? The answer lies in applying this knowledge to real-life scenarios. Let's say, for instance, your partner has an avoidant attachment style. They may value independence and struggle with vulnerability. Understanding this, instead of assuming they're aloof or uninterested, can help you relate to them better. You might give them space when they need it, or approach sensitive conversations in a way that respects their need for autonomy. No matter what attachment style your partner has, the key is to communicate. If you're secure and they're anxious, reassure them. Show them that you're there for them and that their fears of abandonment are not a reality in your relationship. If they're avoidant, respect their boundaries. Understand that for them, intimacy could be synonymous with loss of independence. Now, let's talk about love languages. These are the ways we express and perceive love. They are words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, and physical touch. If your love language is words of affirmation, but your partner's is acts of service, there may be some disconnect. You might feel unloved because you're not hearing the words you need, while they're wondering why all their helpful actions go unnoticed. This is where understanding comes in. Once you know your partner's love language, you can start expressing love in ways they understand. It's like learning to speak their language. And remember, it's equally important to communicate your own love language to them. The beauty of this understanding is that it transcends romantic relationships. It can be applied to friendships, family dynamics, and even professional relationships. It's a tool to understand people's needs and respond to them effectively. Understanding these concepts doesn't guarantee perfect relationships, but it certainly equips us with tools to navigate them better. Remember, the goal is not to change, but to understand and grow together.